NASA says that Voyager 1 has become the first man-made object to reach interstellar space. For over four decades, Voyager 1 has been moving steadily away from Earth, venturing farther than any man-made object in history. Launched in 1977, it has crossed the threshold into interstellar space, sending back data that has reshaped our understanding of the cosmos. But now, something utterly unexpected has happened. For the first time since its launch, Voyager 1 made a movement that no one saw coming. It turned back. Not in the literal, thruster-fired sense, but in a way that felt even more uncanny. Its instruments, fixed rigidly on the deep unknown, shifted their orientation. The probe, programmed to gaze outward, away from our solar system, appeared to have reoriented its sensors, pointing not to the stars ahead but backward, toward home, or at least toward the space it had already crossed. And what it found when it turned stopped the scientific world in its tracks. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. It wasn't a malfunction. Engineers and mission controllers confirmed that the system was fully operational. There was no error in code, no fluke in its instruments. Voyager 1 had, of its own automated programming, executed a sequence that led it to look back. What came through the transmission channels, after days of decoding weak, delayed signals across billions of miles, was unlike anything the scientific community had ever anticipated. It wasn't simply an image or a burst of data, it was a signature. A pattern so precise, so structured, that it immediately triggered alarm, awe, and disbelief across every listening post on Earth. The signal revealed a spatial anomaly that had gone unnoticed for decades. Not a planet, not a comet, but a vast region of structured energy. In the pitch-black void between stars, Voyager 1 detected geometric waves, rippling with rhythms that mirrored nothing natural. These weren't gravitational waves nor magnetic pulses, they had harmony, measured repetition, some sections looped, others grew exponentially in frequency before collapsing back to near silence. This was no cosmic accident. The waves had symmetry, they had timing, and above all, they had intent. Astrophysicists were first to react with stunned silence. The radio telescopes trained on Voyager's coordinates began to pick up faint echoes of the same signal, suggesting the anomaly wasn't just localized to the probe's position, but was emitting in all directions, as though broadcasting. When Voyager turned its instruments further, in a full sweep of the sector behind it, the structured patterns only intensified. The closer its gaze returned to the edge of our heliosphere, the stronger the readings became. It was as if something had been there all along, waiting just past the boundaries of human perception, and only now, after years of silence, acknowledging Voyager's passage with a response. And then came the image. Voyager 1's low-resolution imaging systems were never intended to be used in interstellar space. Most scientists had long dismissed the usefulness of its cameras past Neptune. But when those obsolete lenses were reactivated and the data slowly trickled in, something impossible took shape. A shape. A literal figure emerged in the grainy capture, barely distinguishable from background radiation at first, but unmistakably real upon closer analysis. It wasn't a spacecraft, nor a body of rock or dust. It was a structure, hanging silently in space, impossibly large and yet emitting no visible light of its own. Triangular in form, but not consistent in angle, it seemed to shift, not physically, but perceptually. Its outline warping depending on how it was viewed in successive image frames. It was as if the object refused to be defined by the physics Voyager knew. The implications began to spiral. If this structure had been stationed just beyond the solar boundary, why had it gone undetected for so long? Was it camouflaged, phased, hidden behind some unknown veil of cosmic interference? More haunting was the realization that it seemed perfectly positioned to remain just out of reach. Until now, Voyager's trajectory, nearly forgotten in the public consciousness, had finally drawn close enough to stir its presence, as though something ancient had awoken in the cold quiet. Scientists began to argue not about whether the object was artificial, but who, or what, could have made it. The symmetry of the energy waves implied intelligence. The structure's location, carefully fixed at the solar system's periphery, implied strategy. But the most staggering detail came when the signals were run through pattern analysis systems and linguistics algorithms. A repeating pulse was discovered, and it wasn't random. After days of decoding, the pulse was matched to mathematical constants, P, the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio. These weren't merely universal numbers, they were hallmarks of intelligent design, 
foundational blueprints that no natural process would ever repeat so precisely in sequence. As the world space agencies huddled into emergency conferences, Voyager 1's data stream changed again. This time it wasn't an image or waveform, it was motion. The energy around the structure began to oscillate, a shimmer spreading outward in predictable concentric pulses, like a beacon. Something had noticed Voyager, something was reacting to it. The realization dawned with a clarity that chilled every researcher involved. Voyager's turning was not an accident, it was a response. The probe had received a signal, one so low frequency and deeply embedded in the cosmic background that only its unique battered instruments, far from Earth's noise, could have perceived it. A whisper stretched across space that told it to turn. The deeper horror, though, wasn't in the object itself, or even the fact that it responded. It was in what Voyager's orientation revealed next. The void between stars, previously thought empty and uneventful, now lit up with hundreds, possibly thousands of faint energy signatures, like the first stars piercing through cosmic fog. They were all arranged around the heliosphere in a loose lattice. Each one pulsed faintly in patterns similar to the original anomaly, each sitting like a silent observer on the edge of our cosmic territory. Earth had not been alone in the universe, not even in its own backyard. The rush to classify this discovery turned chaotic. Was this a monitoring network? A defensive grid? An interstellar archive? The theories exploded across disciplines. Linguists worked with physicists to decipher deeper patterns in the waveforms. Theoretical mathematicians suggested that the signals form not a message, but an interface. A way to communicate only if certain knowledge thresholds were met, a test or a filter. And that was when the most haunting interpretation began to spread. Not officially, not in press releases or academic journals, but whispered in labs, online forums, and private messages between senior scientists. What if the signals weren't a greeting, but a warning? What if the orientation of Voyager 1 triggered a protocol meant to activate only when something left the solar system and looked back? What if turning around from out there was the one thing that was never supposed to happen? The probe continued to transmit. Every hour brought more complexity to the waveforms. Some began to show fractal geometries, infinitely recursive structures that seemed designed to trap or loop processing systems. AI models trained on them would lock into endless calculation cycles, forced to chase an ever-changing pattern. It was as though the signal was testing the limits of human interpretation, mapping our cognitive framework by how our machines responded. Engineers attempted to reorient Voyager's instruments back to their previous configuration. The command went out, traveling at the speed of light across nearly 15 billion miles. But when the response came, it was not the simple telemetry confirmation they expected. Voyager had not turned back. It had locked its systems in their current orientation and was no longer accepting redirection. The override protocols, the very ones built in by engineers in the 1970s to allow Earth-based control, had been bypassed or erased. The probe was now looking entirely backward, permanently. The structured signals grew stronger, not in volume, but in precision. Tiny fluctuations in Voyager's transmitter frequency matched exactly with fluctuations observed in Earth's magnetosphere. It was as though something was beginning to sink, something planetary, deep and old. The patterns no longer merely reflected intelligence. They seemed to reflect memory. Researchers began to analyze the wave sequences not only for mathematical structure, but for time-based resonance. One chilling pattern emerged a frequency that pulsed in cycles matching mass extinction events on Earth, another matched solar activity trends across millions of years, and one, still being interpreted, matched human population growth, not in recent centuries, but dating back to a period before recorded history. It was no longer about observing the cosmos, it was about being observed, perhaps always having been observed. And then came the silence. In a final burst of data, Voyager transmitted a pulse unlike any other, it contained no waveforms, no imagery, no readable code, just a single unbroken tone that persisted for 3.4 seconds before everything went quiet. Every system still reported power. Every subsystem showed green, but no new data came. Voyager 1 had stopped speaking. The implications echoed through every scientific institution, every government agency, every back-channel communication line on the planet. The oldest ambassador of human curiosity had turned, seen something in the darkness, and now refused to continue. What could halt the momentum of a probe built to endure forever? Not a failure of technology, but a choice or a consequence. And now, every eye on Earth was pointed to the stars, not with hope, but with a strange and sudden reverence. The silence was not absence, 
it was presence. Something waited out there, and Voyager had looked directly at it. The moment reshaped not just astronomy, but perception. This wasn't a discovery, it was an encounter, one that might have been brewing for millennia. Hidden in plain sight just beyond the curtain of stars, Voyager 1, in its lonely drift across eternity, had touched something vast, quiet, and watching. The cosmos had blinked, and for a moment, through the lens of an aging satellite, it looked back. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Voyager 1 turning back? What do you expect? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.